Finally, you're home. Oh, well, welcome home. I've been waiting for you for what seems like forever. Well, come on in. I made dinner. You look so surprised. What? You didn't think I could cook? I spend most of the day mixing chemicals in a lab. Mixing some ingredients in a pot is nothing to me. I think I'm actually a pretty good chef if I do say so myself. I made a couple of your favorites, so, you know, come on, put your bags down and take your shoes off, you know, relax. Uh, oh, how did I get in here? <laughs> well, when I brought you home, I made a copy of your key. <laughs> how am I supposed to keep track of you? I mean, I didn't want you to be cooped up in my lab any longer, but that didn't mean I never wanted to see you again. Of course I want to see you. You're very, very special to me. And my experiment isn't finished. So come, come, sit down, eat. Oh, don't worry. I see the way you're looking at the food. I didn't tamper with it. I promise it's just your regular food. I actually had to go and buy all new ingredients. <laughs> your house is pretty barren. I don't know if you've been taking care of yourself well. But it's okay. I'm here, so... I can take care of you. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not my subject for tonight. I had some other people in mind. Who? <laughs> well, let me explain. <sighs> you see, when I brought you back here and I let you leave the lab, I told you that I wanted you to experience all the other people around you. You know, eliminate all the bad options so you could realize that I was the one for you all along. But what I didn't plan for was just how vile these people would be and how disgusting they would be. They didn't treat you nearly as nicely as I thought they would. All of their sleazy comments to you and the way they'd make eyes at you and look you up and down, it just, it, it made me sick. <laughs> yes, I was watching. I'm always watching. And there were so many of them too. It was like, it was like putting bait in a shark tank. I, I couldn't stand it. it. It just stressed me out so much. And it just made me so angry and I didn't want to bring you back to the lab because, you know, I had to see the experiment through. So that rage just balled up in me and it gave birth to my creation. My newest creation. This one is called Nightmare Fuel. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Don't worry, it's not for you. It's for all those disgusting people. It's not an herb or a potion or even a spray like holy water was. It's more of a concentrate. I mixed it together and put it in wax blocks. You know, made some candles out of it. Pretty decorative. <laughs> and then I went into town and handed them out to some people. You know, I dressed it up all nice, threw some crystals and some sage in the bags and told them that if they burned the candles right before they went to sleep, that they would have sweet dreams and prosperity and good chakras and whatever. And it's really funny how easily they believed me. Just because I was talking about all these alignments and chakras it seems like that's the way to convince anyone of anything nowadays so i handed them out to a few people and tonight they'll have some interesting experiences <laughs> okay okay <laughs> i was trying to be coy but i'll tell you i'll tell you so the effect of nightmare fuel is twofold the first part lulls them to sleep, 
I mix in a little bit of lavender, chamomile, all those nice soothing things. So as the candle burns in their bedroom, the wax will give off this nice light aroma. And then once they are asleep, in the deepest part of their sleep cycle, that's when the second part of the compound will kick in. It'll trigger their sympathetic pathway and basically jumpstart the fight or flight response. So basically it'll simulate a night terror, but unlike a night terror, it won't just happen in one part of the sleep cycle. It'll happen the entire night. They'll have feelings of panic and impending doom, and they'll just pray that they could wake up, but they won't be able to because their body is still asleep. Imagine sleep paralysis and night terrors mixed together. It's meant to have an all around horrifying experience. I know you seem surprised that I can say that with a smile, but they deserve it for the way that they spoke to you and the way that they would touch you and put their hands on you, their dirty hands. <sighs> They'll get what's coming to them tonight. And you know, my favorite part of it is I put a little bit of your pheromones in there too. So in time, the smell of you, the very scent of you that drives me wild, will put fear in their hearts. They'll associate those night terrors with you. And just like Pavlov's dogs, they'll come to fear you and avoid you. They'll think you're the reason they're afraid. They'll think you're the reason that they panic. They'll think you're the source of their terror and they'll leave you alone. They'll never come near you again. And even when the candle burns out, that feeling will still remain. Sure, it might need some reinforcement, but I figure if they stay away from you, they won't need it. This is a type of punishment that I only need to do once. It's honestly perfect. You haven't even touched your food. I'm sorry, is this talk a little too heavy for dinner time? I must say though, I really enjoy this. Look at us, you and me playing house. You're not my subject anymore. You're my companion, my lover, if you will. I could, I could get used to this. How could I do something so cruel? <laughs> it's not cruel. It's actually very humane. I could have been a lot more invasive like I was with that intern. I never did tell you what happened to them, did I? <sighs> it's probably best that you don't know. Especially now, we're eating. I wouldn't want to ruin your appetite. <laughs> you know, maybe you and I could play house a little bit longer. Maybe I could spend a little more time here with you. I mean, I had originally wondered if I should bring you to my home and keep you there, but you must be so comfortable in your own home. And me, I'm comfortable wherever you are. So maybe I will come and stay here with you. I see you finished your plate. It was good, wasn't it? <laughs> Don't deny it. I know I'm a good cook. <laughs> you still look bothered. <sighs> Listen, I would never do anything like that to you. I would never torture you that way. I told you you're special to me. You're more special than you could ever know. I just really care about you. And 
you even said that there's some hope for me that you could possibly love me too. Sure, it was while you were under the influence of one of my experiments, but it's the truth, and you know it is. I know I said I would let you experience all of the terrible things out here so you could see how good I am, but that doesn't mean I have to sit by and let these people ruin you. They should respect you. And if they won't do it, I'll make them. <laughs>